about 45 minutes ago, we went through um, what's an aftershock, a 7.1 aftershock. Shortly after that, there was another aftershock. We don't quite know what the magnitude of that aftershock was, but the concern here is that the aftershocks were near the Fukushima nuclear plant. We don't have an exact location, but I can tell you that there has been an impact on the nuclear plant. According to TEPCO, in public statements they've just made, they say that they have lost power to reactors one, two, and three. That was external power. The reason why power is so critical is that they need the power in order to keep the water pumping and keep the cores cool of those reactors. We don't know the status of reactor number four. TEPCO, because of all of these aftershocks, they've also had to evacuate all the workers off the plant. So right now they don't have any workers to try to correct this situation, this nuclear emergency that they're still in the midst of. And right now what TEPCO says they're trying to do is as soon as they decide it's safe, they're going to move the workers back in and then start using fire hoses to keep the reactors cool. So again, an ongoing situation and the result of all these aftershocks we're seeing here in Japan. Manita? And that expansion, Kyung, of the uh, the nuclear uh, evacuation zone, that happened before this aftershock. It seems as though the situation there at the, the, the nuclear plant isn't coming under control anytime soon. Uh, certainly, and, and a lot of it is because of what's happening with the aftershocks. You know, seismologists have been saying that Japan is going to continue to see aftershocks up to a magnitude 7 for up to a year. So it's very difficult for TEPCO to get a handle on this, to get ahead of it. And the other problem has been is that they aren't quite sure exactly what the impact, the long-term impact is going to be on the people who live right near the nuclear plant. So the government today announced that they're going to widen the evacuation zone. Currently, it's a 20-kilometer radius that's a mandatory evacuation. But they are now looking at hot spots that are outside that 20-kilometer zone. And they're going to encourage residents who live there not to immediately evacuate, but over the next month, plan on evacuating. The concern is that even though there's no perhaps immediate radioactive, uh, radioactive impact on their, on their health, the concern is that over a year or so, the growing radioactive buildup could have an impact on their health. This is something that NGOs like Greenpeace have called for very early on for Japan to widen this evacuation zone, and now making it official, the government saying they are going to be doing that.